Okay. Hi, students from my D and Dash D34 teacher training class. This little tutorial is for you. Um, I got a request from one of your classmates to please um, go over how to feel and sense the multifidus and then how to learn to fire our own multifidus and how to help cue a client to feel and fire their multifidus. <laughs> so I'm going to address that a little bit today. So um, first of all, I just want to go over some stuff uh, to review some things. Uh, the, uh, the cylinder of support that we're calling our inner core, which is that nice cylinder of support, right, through this trunk area. So that's made up of uh, some specific muscle group muscles that help make up that inner core, which is our cylinder of support. And they are um, the transverse abdominis, which wraps around horizontally and is primarily the front and it's part of the sides of your cylinder. And then the pelvic floor, which is your bottom lid to the cylinder. The diaphragm, which is your top lid to the cylinder. And then on the back side, the multifidus, which is a deep spinal muscle that, yes, does co-contract with the transverse abdominis when you're in the ideal um, alignment and focusing on specific things to fire it. Um, and those two synergetically, as well as, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, but they, they, they do work somewhat synergetically. So, um, we're gonna focus on the multipitous though. And so the multipitous is, as I said, a deep back muscle that's located next to the bones in the middle of your spine, okay? And your, and your pelvis, because the spine, it does go all the way down and it actually inserts at the sacrum and it specifically uh, this is a little sacrum. This is um, the base of the sacrum. Under here would be your tailbone, right? And this is, you're looking at the posterior side. And typically the lower fibers of the multifidus are going to insert somewhere around S2-ish, 1-2-ish, or slightly below it. So right about in here, all right? And then it goes up the sides here of the sacrum to then continue up the back. And as it's thick, thickest at this bottom area, and as it goes up, it gets smaller and smaller. It's very intersegmental through the spine, like little she those little chevrons. And, um, but it's fattest or thickest down in this lower area in the sacral and lumbar area. Um, and so the, so it's multi-segmental. It does help complete the corset. And important to remember that if there is injury, especially to the back, or even other places as well that could cause uh, atrophy of the multifidus, um, or just dis dysfunction um, of some kind, like sedentary, having to be sedentary, uh, the, the multifidus is gonna atrophy pretty quickly and so it does atrophy in either injury or dysfunction the problem with that is that it's very hard to to bring it back uh, you have to specifically train it um, in in knowing what to do about that what we have to remember is that the multifidus lies embedded uh, within the posterior fascia and the multifidus tightens the fascia by swelling. And um, so it's what, when I was training to try to learn to turn on mine, I was given the image of, it's kind of like it plumps, like an avocado, it's firmish, but not hard, but not super squishy, uh, not a super squishy avocado, <laughs> um, but it kind of does swell a little bit. Uh, and so when it turns on or when you to start to fire it, um, if you can, I'll give you some images on this in a minute, but, but obviously um, it is a deep, deep muscle 
and so and it does belong to that whole um, category of the erector spinae muscles and the spinal extensor apparatus and it's one of the deepest of the spinal muscles groups um, but the difference is that the deep fiber fibers of the multifid multifidus are contributing to the stability of the vertebra segmentally vertebra by vertebra it's helping stability vertebra by vertebra because again it goes up the spine and um, so that's real important to, to uh, for our back to have the, that multifidus trained for stability um, and it helps to prevent slippage of L5 and L4 and um, that's in your lumbar area and where is one of the most common injuries in the low back L5 L4 ish so you, that's where you hear a lot of people having degenerated disc or a bulging disc or a disc that's been you know compressed um, that's often the area and so to keep that part of the back nice and healthy that multifidus does need to be trained it needs to know how to turn on and so it is very important to, for us to address that, especially with someone who's coming out of injury or dysfunction. It also can act as an anti-rotator in the trunk flexion. It helps uh, keep you from rotating um, and causing compression. Um, and so as I had said, when you have um, so it, it's an anti-rotator, it prevents slippage at L5-4 vertebrae. And when there is injury or aphidy, the multifidus is not automatically gonna come back on its own. It's not like other muscles where you can go, okay, now we're gonna train that muscle. Nope, very deep muscle. So it needs to be specifically addressed in training. And that means we're going to um, work on motor learning and repatterning motor learning and repatterning and what is great doing that well what is that anyway it's a brain skill it's a brain skill to do repatterning right and so how do we address that best through imagery so imagery helps to recruit the multifidus imagery helps to recruit the multifidus so what I'll go over are some ways, some little tricks and, and ways for you to work on this. And don't think that you're going to suddenly get a client to turn on their multifidus in one session. Um, it sometimes takes a while and takes a, some coming back to some repetition um, and possibly a variety of different ways of trying to help the client turn it on through imagery and some little stuff we're gonna do. So what I'm now gonna show you, which most of you, you, we've learned these, but I'm just reviewing it with the multifidus in mind. So um, one of, I think one of the best ways to, um, to start people to uh, feel, get an idea of the imagery use is to use either a, um, like a, P500 size ball, but you want one ideally, and this is not one of those, that is anti-burst in case you're working with a little bit heavier client. Um, and so you want one that isn't gonna flatten when they lay on it. So, but something around this size is good. Um, or I've got one that's a slightly deflated. This is a one size you could use, but it's a little on the large size, and this particular one's kind of firm, and it would work for your larger client, and it's anti-burst, but I like one more this size, uh, maybe even slightly inflated, or my favorite for this particular sequence we're gonna do is, um, this is the uh, globe from the Smart Spine System of Prop or Pieces, that was created by Marie Jose Blom, and um, that's available through the Smart Spine website. And so um, this is just called the globe, and it looks kind of like a globe, <laughs> and it's filled with these materials, so it feels kind of like a sandbag almost. But the nice thing is, it can be put in the microwave and heated up. Now you don't want to overheat it; you just want it a little bit warm, 
so that the warmth will help encourage that multipetus a little bit um, and it will feel good to the client too. So um, this uh, is got some give to it, but it is uh, fairly firm as well. And it's a good size, it's about the right size. So what I would do, of course, is just have the client lay down with their knees bent and I might put a, um, a wedge under the leg so they don't have to worry about holding their legs. So for example, um, you could use an arc barrel. An arc barrel would work or something like one, a wedge cushion like this. So they could take their legs out of it a little bit more. And then, um, then you could have them lift up and put that, or you could have them do put that uh, globe under first, might be easier. And then you can adjust it and make sure it is on that lower area below the waist toward the tailbone, but not on the tailbone directly. It's a little above the tailbone area on that low sacral area, you know, so not too high. You don't want it to be, be uncomfortable where they feel like it's hurting, okay? But they should feel like they can, it's solid. They can, they can rest on it and be comfortable there. Then if, if they're the kind of person that has issues, you might want to then drape their legs over a arc barrel or a cushion so they don't have to work their legs here so they can focus on other things. But if you're gonna do some other things along with what we're doing here, like leg lifts and things on the globe, then you wouldn't be using a cushion. Okay, so I'm just gonna start here. And like I said, you could warm this up and just have them rest on it. And I would have them relax everything. Let go of the glutes and then just start from nothing, okay? Then have them take a few breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, to start getting the air moving and their diaphragm working. And then you might give them the image of, uh, to activate the pelvic floor, you could put a ball between the knees and say, now think of that ball from your knees dragging up to the pelvic floor and up a little under the, into the pelvic floor, which means you're not gripping the glutes. There's no glute activity yet here at all. Actually, there won't be any at all here through, through what we're doing. And because uh, gripping the glutes, what's going to happen? They're going to tuck. Miltifidus doesn't fire in a tuck. Nope, we want a neutral pelvis. So we don't want to grip those glutes. So we want to activate the pelvic floor though. And that diaphragm's working, the lid, top lid to your core by breathing through the lungs in a way that is not pushing hard through the belly not uh, tightening in the shoulders, just that easy inhale and out, exhale. And then once you've got that going on, you can start to focus them a little bit of that light bracing or seat belting across that low area, which would be the uh, transverse abdominis. Now I won't go, that's a separate tutorial possibly, but we've talked about different ways to fire the TA. That could be imagining the two front pelvic bones moving toward each other without actually having them move, of course, but you're, you're imaging in your mind those two bones moving toward each other. See, right away my multifidus kicked on. The minute I Im imaged that, my multifidus also kicked on. But of course, my multifidus is already trained. So there's my knot. But already when I kicked in that transversus, ooh, that co-contraction happened. So you do want the uh, you want them to activate here, but not by tucking or gripping or any of that. We just want that easy little uh, saran wrapping, that that light, and you know again you can have them do that little push in their thighs into their hands, and they feel that little light bracing, and that's kind of the idea. Then then after you kind of got that set up, now let's go to the multifidus. So one image um, that you can think of. And again, we're using imagery because that multifidus responds a little better to some brain work, okay? So I can think of I, uh, this ball that I'm on, or this, in this case, this globe. Without any movement happening, I'm just imagining that, that globe gliding up the back of my spine. So even though it's not moving, I'm imagining, oh, that ball starts to just, like it's on a, a, a conveyor belt, it's just going up my spine. And I try to, as I image that, maintain that little light bracing, relax the glutes, and see my multifidus is kicking on. Okay, so that's one image you can play with. Now at first they may say, I don't feel anything, I don't feel anything. 
you have to tell them this is brain work and it takes time and not to force it, okay? And to focus on subtlety. Subtlety is the name of the game here. Okay, then another image you can use though, because I like to use several images and I don't like to do it all at once. So this may be the image I use, then maybe the next session I'm gonna use a different image or a different positioning, all right? So on and so on. But another image you can use that uh, I learned from a colleague was Imagine you have a tattoo on, and you've heard me say this in class, imagine you have a tattoo on your low back area, which would be below the waist, kind of right where this globe is. And so the tattoo's right under that globe, between the globe and your spine. And just think of the skin of that tattoo dragging up towards your waist without moving any bones. That also kicks in my multifidus, okay? And it might help them to start to feel it. And then after, you play with those images, and I wouldn't do them all at once. I'd give one image and then let it go and come back to it either later in the session or another session. Don't overload them. Brain work is hard. <laughs> and so you want to kind of introduce it gradually. Um, it's not going to happen over in one, in one session necessarily. Okay, another image that my, one of my good friends came up with that I used to uh, work with a little bit was um, like two tubes of toothpaste right in that low area right there on either side of the spine, kind of like the fatness of the multifidus down there. These little tubes of toothpaste, and the toothpaste is squirting up out of the tube upward toward the waist, and I'm not moving any bones. And for some people, that image might work better. You have to find what works for people. It might take a while. So any of those kind of images can help. And then, after you have them breathe and focus on some of those images and they don't feel like they're doing anything here, but really we're just trying to activate that multifidus. Get it to wake up and turn on a little bit. Now, while you're here, you can do some little movements with them focusing on stability and that just continues to work on the transverse abdominis. And remember, you need that TA to be working in order for the multifidus to wanna to come on. It might not wanna turn on if that transverse abdominis is not on. So this helps too. And then um, after you take them off of it, I always like to let them rest a little for a few minutes. And then I say, now without that globe, use those same images. The tattoo dragging up or the, um, imagine you were on uh, a ball that was dragging up or the toothpaste and, and without doing any movement, see if they can feel it a little more with now, okay? And sometimes they'll say, yeah, I kind of see what you're saying. I kind of feel it, maybe. And again, it may take several sessions. When I was first learning to turn mine on, it took me a long time because <laughs> I came out of a real bad back problem. And so it depends on how healthy their back is and how much atrophy there is and dysfunction as to how long it may take. Um, another um, way, uh, way that we can try to access the multifidus then would be, um, you know, I use that image of dragging the, the, the waist upward, like somebody grabbed your pant back, pant waist and dragged up. And that one I like to use in seat, seated positions when I'm trying to fire the multifidus. So whether they're sitting just, you know, sitting or whether you have them on a piece of apparatus and you feel like they're back here and you say, well, get on those sit bones and well, then still you want them to fire that multifidus, right? So you have that image of lift that back pant waist a little or drag that tattoo up and see if they, and so you've got to introduce it to them in several different positions. Lying down is probably, I think, one of the easiest using like a ball or a globe to introduce it. Then you have to, in, you have to reinforce that seated and standing but then another way that we can access it sometimes um, is through touch. And so one thing you can do when they're seated, is, and also I'll show you sideline, is if they're seated, you can put your fingertips firmly, but not pushing, but firmly. So it's not just a light touch, so they need to feel it. And so remember I said it kind of inserts down on the sacrum about S2-ish. You put your hands right on either side. So it's it's right at or slightly above the PSIS, and depending on your client. And so you just go right in here and you just touch firmly and then you say, now give them one of those images though. You need to touch and use the brain 
imagery. So I touch here and I firmly go upward with my touch. I glide it up as I'm saying, think of the tattoo dragging up or think of the um, uh, back pant waist pulling up or whatever image that seems to resonate with them, the toothpaste, whatever. And you just give them the touch in addition and they're just sitting in a good neutral and they're breathing. Don't look, make sure that you cue some breathing and you just give them that, that tactile, uh, re you know, as well as the, vi uh, the verbiage. Okay, now you've got two things going on. You've got your tactile and your visual cue, your brain cue power cues, and uh, hopefully that can help them to start to activate it in a more, in a seated position and later standing position. You can do the same thing sideline. So you have them lay on their side, and then you want to get them in neutral though. All right, so uh, I'm going to use myself here real quick. So if I just have them lay down in their bent leg position. I, if I want to fire the multifidus, I want this little clam position. So I want my heels in line with my glutes and knees a little bent, stack the legs. But then you have to make sure that, and I would put a little pillow between their head and arm or a towel. And then you want to lengthen this top hip bone. And then I sometimes put a little folded towel right under that little waist area so that they don't fight to keep it in the position. So in other words, if they're more of a newer client, they may not have the understanding of what, that in neutral sideline there is that little lift here, and that might be uncomfortable for them on their hips and so forth. So you bring the floor to the spine and you place it under the waist, just enough so that, yes, you still lengthen here, they're still getting a little elongation underneath, but they're not fighting against gravity quite so much. I also like to put a pillow between the head and arm or a small towel so that again their head's in good alignment as you know. Stack here and I'll see my feet are not behind me, they're out here a little bit and now I'm in my neutral spine and pelvis and then I get behind the client, touch that same area I talked about and then to give them that same tactile gliding upward as you cue the visual imagery of whatever image you're going to use that day and you can come up with other images too I'm sure and so this reinforcing in various ways then you can add movement maintaining neutral pelvis maintaining the image of the multifidus as they do this very slow fluid controlled small movement and that's how you start to retrain re-educate and turn on the multifidus so I hope that gives you some ideas, and most of it you've heard, but sometimes a little review is helpful. So if you have further questions, please let me know. <laughs> okay.